Hydronephrosis Hydronephrosis is defined as a septic dilatation of the whole or a part of pelvic calcial system of the kidney due to partial or intermittent interruption to the outflow of urine. So as the name indicates hydronephrosis. Hydro meaning water or fluid. It is the accumulation of the fluid due to the interruption of the outflow of urine. It is mainly caused in the pelvis and the calyx. Hydronephrosis of the kidney is seen in this diagram with marked dilatation of the pelvis and calyces. Due to the dilatation, we can note the thinning of the renal parenchyma. Causes The hydronephrosis refers to dilatation of the renal pelvis and calyces with accompanying atrophy of the parenchyma. As we have learned here, the parenchyma of the kidney becomes thin and finally it atrophies. This is caused due to the obstruction of the outflow of urine. There are two causes, the congenital and the acquired. The congenital hydronephrosis is caused due to atresia of the urethra. Aberrant renal artery which compresses the ureter also causes hydronephrosis. The renal ptosis with kinking of the ureter also causes hydronephrosis. The acquired causes are the foreign bodies like stone that means the blockage of the renal pelvis and the callus by a stone causes bulging of the renal cavity above the blockage that leads to the dilatation of the renal parenchyma. Tumors like cancer prostate and bladder tumors, inflammation of the prostate, urethra and the ureter. The neurogenic causes are the spinal cord damage with paralysis of the bladder. So these can be the causes of the hydronephrosis. Let's come from the pelvis. The pelvis can be obstructed by the presence of calliculi. Those are the stones, tumors, urethropelvic stitches and the ureter. That means intrinsic causes of the ureter are the inner walls of the ureter can be jammed by the calliculi, tumors, clots, slot papillae and the inflammation. The ureter extrinsic that means outside the ureter can be caused by the pregnancy, tumors, the retroperitoneal fibrosis and in bladder the calliculi, tumors and the functional damage may lead to hydronephrosis. And the urethra, the posterior valve stricture and the tumors, they also cause hydronephrosis. In case of prostate, the hyperplasia that means enlargement of the prostate, the carcinoma and the inflammation of the prostate gland are also the reason of hydronephrosis. So we have learnt about the etiological factors. Those are the congenital and the acquired causes. These etiological factors causes obstruction of the urine flow by which the fluid backs up into the kidney. It causes the dilatation of the renal pelvis which leads to results in barotraumas and pressure traumas. This higher pressure causes irreversible destruction of the nephrons and then it leads to the hypertrophy of the kidney. The hypertrophy is caused due to increased workload. So remember the hypertrophy is usually caused in case of excessive workload. For example, in cases of heart, you can see the hypertrophy like the left ventricular hypertrophy is more commonly seen because of the hypertension in which you can note the increased workload. As well as here in the case of hydronephrosis, the hypertrophy is seen as the consequence of the increased work. So this hypertrophy further causes the hydronephrosis for which the further complication is the renal failure. The morphology. The kidney here is massively enlarged with greatly distended pelvic calcial system. The renal parenchyma is compressed first and then atrophied with the obliteration of the papilla and then the flattening of the renal pyramids. Depending on the type of obstruction, one or both ureters may also be dilated. The dilatation of the ureter is called as the hydroureter. So these are the levels of obstruction in the hydronephrosis at the kidney, 
in the calyx the pelvis ureter in which we have seen the intrinsic and the extrinsic factors in the etiology and the bladder even the urethra this is the gross specimen of the hydrourethra and the hydronephrosis here you can note the kidney this is the kidney in which you can note the dilated calyx and the pelvis in this whole part is the ureter in which you can see the dilated appearance this is a gross specimen of a severe hydronephrosis this is the kidney in which you can see the markedly enlarged pelvis the hydronephrosis is asymptomatic in some cases the pain is felt in the renal area hematuria may be present anuria or the oliguria urinary infections dysuria and frequency of urination calliculi are present azotemia is present unexplained vague gi symptoms and some large hydronephrosis can be palpable because of the large distended sizes and the distension of the bladder if urethra is obstructed may also be seen here you can note the stages of the hydronephrosis this is the normal kidney this is the mild distension moderate level and the severe form of hydronephrosis the bilateral and the complete obstruction of both kidneys produce anuria which means absence of urine which is a big emergency in incomplete and bilateral obstruction it produce polyuria rather than oliguria which is caused as a result of defect in tubular concentration mechanism unilateral hydronephrosis may be silent for a long time unless the other kidney is affected because the other kidney is working the unilateral hydronephrosis is usually undiagnosed the bilateral hydronephrosis usually leads to uremia if the obstructive cause is known and the early removal of the obstruction it can return the kidney to its normal function however with the time the changes become irreversible that means after the dilatation the parenchyma becomes thin and after long time of dilatation it becomes atrophy that becomes irreversible so guys this is all about the topic hydronephrosis if you like this lecture video do subscribe to my channel and do check on my recent videos and playlists